Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA of two Velikian samples from Dagestan, the south, the southeastern portion of Dagestan by the Caspian Sea, who actually belong to the Kura Araxis culture, which was an early Bronze Age culture of Armenia and West Asia. Now let's move on to the first individual. She is a woman and she is actually related to the second individual. From my understanding, it was like a family burial that happened at the site at Vilikent. She is predicted to have hazel or brown color eyes, uh, snub or Greek shaped nose, kind of similar prediction for these two categories, and blonde or brown hair, but not black and not red hair. It was kind of difficult to determine her hair color, eye color on the rest of the stuff because she wasn't genotyped for most, most. She wasn't genotyped for most of the variants used in calculation. It was a very low quality file. Uh, with Y sex, she's predicted to have blonde hair and uh, sunglasses instead of eyes. Well, that's typical. That's the standard. That's the standard prediction that Y sex gives to you when they don't find any variants, right? Uh, she had two derived variants in SLC 45A2 for lighter skin, eyes, and hair. Um, she's also got some draft variants in OCA 2 too, but by the way, she wasn't genotyped for BH1 or BH2 or BH3 or BH4, so I can't really tell you. Uh, from, from this file, I cannot really tell you if she had any of those mutations. She's got A2A2 genotype in the TAC1 variation of DRD2, so uh, normal odds of ADHD, Parkinson's and various other illnesses, uh, normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors in the brain, which means higher amount. And she's got, um, does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, so uh, probably, well, this is a European mutation, right? And she's not a European, so she's not going to have it. Nobody outside of Europe has it. Uh, she does not have the East Asian EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no shovel-shaped incisors, no epicanthic folds. Um, she has this genotype, which basically protects her from type 1 diabetes. Pretty cool genotype to have, like basically decreasing the risk of that type 1 diabetes by 6 it's a pretty significant stuff uh, she's got this genotype which allows her to taste bitterness now from this you would you can make the inference that some people are not able to taste bitterness which is interesting look it up on the synpedia if you're interested and she's got this genotype uh, for increased risk of autism this is a pretty common genotype as you can see 61.7 percent of code gen users have the same genotype here so just because it's an increased risk of autism well it doesn't mean much because most people have the same genotype here now moving on to polygenic traits, she's got an average risk score for Crohn's disease, uh, she's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes, she's got a low risk score for Parkinson's disease, she's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder, and she's got a pretty high risk score for arthra arthra arthritis. Let's see her Eurogenes K13 score on GED match. Here you can see she's scoring 4.5% Baltic and also 2.7% North Atlantic. Now, North Atlantic, Anatolia and Neolithic farmers might score a little bit of that. I'm not sure, but Baltic, not Anatolia and Neolithic farmers, not Caucasus hunter-gatherers, not Iran and Neolithic farmers, none of them score any Baltic. So we can see, even from this calculator, we can see there is a lot of Baltic shift in this individual. And this is what she scores with point DNA LK10. And although here you can't really tell it that well because Anatolia and Neolithic farmers also score a bunch of Western Hunter Gatherer here. This is a high WHG score. This is way too much Western Hunter Gatherer than what you would expect. This is what she scores with point DNA LK12. And here she is scoring 12% European Hunter Gatherer once again. Where is this Hunter Gatherer coming from? Do you think it's from Anatolia and Neolithic farmers? Or do you think it's from steppe people? I think it's from steppe people. I think it's from Indo European admixture. Uh, with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Iranian plus Russian, or Georgian Jewish, Jewish plus Pamiri, or like Iranian plus Mardvin. So, relative to the Iranians, there is a shift towards Northeastern Europeans. And this is what she's scoring with Harappa World. Once again, we can see that here she's scoring 7% Northeast European. Now, the Iranian Neolithic farmers, the Anatolian farmers, the, the Caucasus hunter gatherers, none of them score anything remotely similar to 7% Northeast European. So this person has either some kind of, uh, either underwent some kind of drift that made it more similar to Northeast Europeans, which is unlikely, or it has some Northeast European admixture. This is what she's scoring with Pandiana LK16. She is scoring 20% step here, okay? 20% step. This is not like ma minor a little bit of step, a little bit of step like admixture. No, this is a very big. 20% step is a lot. It's a big chunk of her ancestry. This is what she's scoring with Ancient Eurasia K6. This is kind of, I don't really take this result too seriously. Uh, mostly scoring Ancestral North Eurasian and Natufian, but you can't really get much detail 
uh, with the calculator that only has six components, right? Uh, she is getting modeled as a mixture of CHG plus Scottish or CHG plus Ukrainian, basically a mixture of Caucasus hunter gatherer plus some kind of a modern European. This is what she scores with Kidrosia K3, uh, kind of a typical result for anybody from Western Asia today. Now let's move on to the second sample. This sample is a bit higher coverage, so you're going to see more information on his phenotype. Uh, GD match is going to be a little bit more accurate for him. This is what he's predicted to look like. He's predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and any hair color besides red, basically. Uh, with Snipper Free, he is predicted to have uh, green or hazel eyes, white skin, and actually blonde hair. But, you know, Snipper Free and Wysec, they are not that good. Um, he had BH1, but no BH3 and no BH4. I cannot tell you whether or not he had BH2. That's not determined. I couldn't determine that from the file. And because of this, because I wasn't able to determine that from the file, this is actually the reason he's got sunglasses with the YSEC prediction too. Uh, he did not have the European hunter-gatherer gene for ginger hair, pale skin, and blue eyes, which is IRF4. Uh, and he he did have the light Eurasian skin variations in SLC24, A5. Just like the previous sample, he also got the A2A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2. So normal uh, odds of ADHD and tardive dyskinesia, normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors. Uh, also lactose intolerant, just as the previous sample, that he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is no surprise because he's not a European. And um, also the same genotype that reduces the risk of type 1 diabetes as the previous sample. I'm thinking this might be a common genotype for other Kura Rax people. Uh, and he's got this genotype for increased risk of cleft lip. Cleft lip is kind of... I'm going to show you a picture of cleft lip on the screen right now. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a slightly high risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he's got a slightly low risk score for Crohn's disease. He's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a slightly high risk score for brain aneurysm. He's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a slightly high risk score for asthma. Uh, he's got a slightly low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder. And he's got a pretty high risk score for rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis. Now this is what he's scoring with Eurogenes K13 on GED match. Notice how he's scoring 9.5% Baltic. That is a huge amount of Northern European drift for somebody who apparently doesn't have any Indo-European ancestry. Or does he? I don't know. Uh, I'm inclined to think he does actually. Uh, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Abkhazian plus Baloch or Abkhazian plus Brahui or Makrani with the oracle here. And this is kind of the same thing as what we see with the official G25 for the sample that I found on Explore Your DNA. Uh, this is what he scores with MZLP K16, and he is scoring 18% step, not 20% like the previous sample, but 18% is also a lot of step admixture. He is closest to various Azerbaijanis here and Georgians, and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Georgian plus Jat or Patan or Burusha, basically uh, Georgian plus some kind of South Central Asian or Pakistani groups. Uh, this is what he's scoring with Harappa World. Once again, 10% Northeast European is a lot. Like Caucasus Hunter Gatherers don't have this admixture. Barsin Neolithic doesn't have this. Iranian Neolithic doesn't have this. But this person, who is supposedly a mixture of the three, has 10% Northeast European shift. Why is that the case? Um, how does he have this admixture when none of his ancestors, none of his supposed ancestors have it? Now let's move on to the PUNT DNA calculators. These calculators are a little bit different in their results from the previous. They actually show a lot less European hunter-gatherer admixture. Uh, these are more in line with what you would expect for a Kura Arax individual to score, closest to Iranian, getting modeled as a mixture of Abkhazian plus Bedouin or Abkhazian plus Saudi or Abkhazian plus Yemenite. Uh, stuff that you would expect for a uh, Kura Arax individual to score. This is what he is scoring with Pan DNA LK10. Only 7% VHG. Very interesting result. Closest to Georgians, followed by Abkhazians, followed by Iranians. And also getting modeled as a mixture of Abkhazian plus Syrian or Abkhazian plus Jordanian. But this is kind of different from what we see with G25 for this sample. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Um, a more realistic result here. A little bit of Ancestral South Eurasian too. He is closest to Iranians. Uh, Shiraz, I think, is in the south of Iran, and Mazandaran is supposed to be in the north. At least that's how I remember it. Uh, so yeah, it's very, um, very Eastern Mediterranean, West Asian kind of result. 
And similar result with Gidrosia K3 to the previous sample, also kind of 5%, five, five, to 5% 5 Sub-Saharan African and 6% East Eurasian. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download the samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Uh, it's on my drive. And of course, uh, other stuff, other samples that I've made videos on are all on my drive, so you can find it in my drive folder, the link to which is going to be in the description. Thanks for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and goodbye.